In today's experiment, we're going to measure the speed of light, and we're going to do that without producing or observing any light. We're just going to use a capacitor, a multimeter to measure its capacitance, a solenoid, which is a wire tightly wound into a helix, and a magnetometer to measure the magnetic field created by the solenoid. You might be thinking, what does light have to do with capacitors and solenoids? And that's a great question. Historically, electricity, magnets, and light were three completely separate fields of study. But starting in the early 1800s, Ersted, Faraday, Kirchhoff, and other scientists started discovering connections between these seemingly unrelated fields. The story of the unification of electricity and magnetism is long and fascinating, but here we will fast forward to the end when James Maxwell showed that electric and magnetic fields can propagate through space as electromagnetic waves, and furthermore, that these electromagnetic waves are in fact light. Perhaps then, it is not so surprising that the speed of light in a medium is determined by the electric and magnetic properties of that medium. What may be surprising is that vacuum, which you may think is nothing at all, has electric and magnetic properties, like any other medium. More quantitatively, solving Maxwell's equations reveals that the speed at which these waves propagate in vacuum is c equals 1 over the square root of epsilon naught mu naught. That means that if we can calculate the values of these two constants, we can determine the speed of light. So what are these constants? Epsilon naught is called the vacuum permittivity, or the dielectric constant of vacuum. You might remember it from Coulomb's force law between two electric charges. Conceptually, the permittivity of any medium measures its resistance in forming an electric field within the medium. Mu naught is analogous to epsilon naught, but for magnetic fields. It is called the vacuum permeability, or magnetic constant, which you may remember from Ampere's force law between two current-carrying wires. Conceptually, the permeability of any medium measures its ability to allow the magnetic field to pass through the medium. Today's experiment has two parts. In the first, you will measure epsilon naught, and in the second, you will measure mu naught. In each part, you will have the opportunity to do the measurement in two different ways and compare your results. Then, you'll be able to combine your results to get a value for c, the speed of light in vacuum. At the end of the video, you can see how close you got to the actual speed of light. Here we have two aluminum plates, which, when sandwiched together, form a parallel plate capacitor. The plates have a known width and length. We connect each of these plates to a terminal in this digital multimeter, which can measure the capacitance of the plates directly. Your task is to use your knowledge of how the geometrical shape of a capacitor relates to its capacitance to deduce epsilon naught. We'll do this in two different ways, which is always a good thing to do because it helps you to identify sources of systematic uncertainty in your experimental setup. The first method involves varying the spacing between the plates by adding spacers in the corners made of scotch tape. This ensures that most of the space between the plates is just air. Each piece of tape has a thickness of 0.05 millimeters.
The second method involves keeping the spacers fixed at 20 pieces of tape and varying the overlap area by sliding one plate off the other incrementally. Isn't it cool how we can do two different experiments with the same setup and generate two values for the same quantity? Here we have a solenoid, which creates a magnetic field inside it when current flows through it. And here we have a magnetometer, which measures the magnetic field at its tip. Observe how it detects the magnetic field created by a permanent magnet. When the magnet is aligned with it, it measures a large field with a negative sign to indicate directionality. But when the magnet is perpendicular, it measures a much smaller field. This tells us that the magnetometer measures the component of the magnetic field along its axis, not the total magnitude of the field. Your task is to use your knowledge of how the current through a solenoid relates to the magnetic field created inside it to deduce mu naught. Again, we'll do this in two ways, using two different solenoids.
by moving the magnetometer around inside the solenoid, we can get a sense of how much the magnetic field varies throughout its interior, which you should bear in mind later when you think about the uncertainty in your calculation. Now, let's place the magnetometer close to its center and take some data. Here's the second solenoid. Once again, let's test how uniform the magnetic field is in its interior. Then we place the magnetometer close to its center and repeat the process. All right, that's it. You should have everything you need to get a value for the speed of light in vacuum. Pause the video here if you need more time to do your calculation, and press play when you're ready to compare your results with the actual speed of light. Thanks for watching.